like any presentation saying, okay, rule number one, this is how we should do. Rule number two, how we should do. We'll take an example. Uh, I will show if I was a designer, how would I do? And there are a few tips I'll be giving uh, here and there. And uh, after the session, I'll give you the presentation also. Is it okay? So it's only for programmers? Uh, no. Anybody who's not a designer? Because they would know most of the things, what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. These are the words you would have generally... Is it clear? Yeah. Right. These are the most of the words you would have heard generally while working with your teams. And we will just go through what each and everything means. Uh, most of you might know. Because I'll be using in between these are the words. Uh, usability, of course. That's most used word in whenever it comes to designing a UI. And most of the times, you would say, okay, the user interface should be usable by my grandmother or someone. It should be so usable. That's one of the most common words that anybody would say. Okay, how is this user interface? Can my grandma use it? Okay, then it's usable. But it's not the case. You'll see why is it not the case. UI UX, the difference is very small. Yes. Uh, I would like to have here one more word, accessibility. Yeah. Accessibility. And, and comparison between usability and accessibility. How it that it okay, can I'll be. make a point and I'll explain you what is the difference. Is it okay if I tell you later? Once the yeah. or I'll tell you now. Uh, accessibility most of the times we'll be having uh, examples like one example I'll tell you tabbing. If it's a form, you should know how the flow of the uh, forms. See. So we, what do we see is, uh, we see, okay, is this uh, all these fields accessible in terms of a browser? Maybe one example is that. There are like a lot of examples which I do not deal with accessibility. I'm just giving you an example. And maybe you also see, is it, can it be readable? If a person who is not able to see who is visually challenged, can he read the text? So those are the kinds that accessibility come. But usability is, uh, example on this screen would be, Sorry, not getting it right now. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of things in accessibility which I do not know. I am not fully aware of accessibility. Yeah, here yes. what the application has to be, we should have access to many, we have four browsers, other than versions. Multiple accessibility connections and all these things that need to be accessible as well as the product standard. What he says is, uh, example, this form should be accessible by all the browsers or what are the, all the supporting uh, platforms, it should be accessible. That's a part of also accessibility. Mm -hmm. And what we generally know is if somebody is uh, visually challenged or someone, can, can the text be readable? That's also one part of accessibility. And your tabbing is also part of accessibility. Mm -hmm. So wireframing is a term where, where used before. That's a wireframing example. I have not done the UI, but I've just uh, drawn the boundaries of the text and uh, the input elements. That's wireframing. Information architecture. So it's uh, again a small thing. Here you have an. Uh, uh, so we have people. Then we have developers. Then we have maybe we have the separate categories of web developers, or uh, I don't know whether it's maybe there, and we have maybe have designers. So this is how you uh, layer or uh, separate your information in terms of a uh, groups. Yeah, in terms of groups. I don't. Can you can you move it a little bit, sir? Because we cannot see anything on the point. But you can put it here. Yeah. Is this fine? It's not looking. Okay. okay. Most of the things are here. Okay. Data visualization. I think you would have seen a lot of big data visualizations in terms of graphs. Uh, then a lot of. Uh, you'd see like. Uh, 
flow, uh, information flowing here and there. So this will keep showing you the connectivity, connectivity between this node and this node. And uh, a lot of graphs are done on base of data visualization. Interaction design is something where a person who is called an interaction designer gets information from the that's okay. Uh, gets information from the researcher. We will go through this process and even visual uh, visual design and go through the process. And these are the most of the buzzwords generally you hear now. Responsive design. I think most of you know what is responsive design. If in case if I'm using a uh, web application, if it's on tab, it has to fit to the size. It's just not putting everything in a small uh, space. But how do you change the layout? That also matters in responsive. Maybe you're seeing the same application using mobile. The complete layout changes. Example would be. So on a tab, you might have a big header and you'll have maybe four columns and maybe you have to have this and this. And the same information comes on a mobile. Is it good to have like this? Or is it good to have So yeah, we have to decide. Seeing how much information is being seen on the uh, device, how are you going to put the, uh, give the layout? That comes under responsive design. Then device ready is again a very, very new term, what we are saying about wearables. Nowadays, watches are coming, the glass is already there. So how are we thinking in terms of design for that? So those kind of things are design ready uh, applications or uh, interfaces. And yeah, again, a big Sorry, some practical example of device. Uh, device ready is uh, <coughs> we do a card layout. Example, whatever uh, design. Example, user uh, username password. It, it will fit inside this because if you want to fit this information in a watch, it has to fit in this a small uh, space. Again, if you are uh, fitting the same user interface in a glass, it has to be in one of these designs. Example would be your uh, location. So where are you? So you, you cannot have uh, information which is like this. You are located here because nowadays the uh, devices are getting more in terms of a smaller space. So you have to think in terms of a small space. That's one of the examples. And I think flat is also one of the buzzwords everyone knows. The skeuomorphism is uh, completely gone and the whole world is going towards flat. The difference is I think it's, uh, the skeuomorphism is uh, an icon will look exactly like the real world example. So if you're uh, making an icon that is a, for a football, you'll have 3D, you'll have the gloss, you'll have all the uh, patterns, and also the uh, uh, the feel of football, how it is. But if it is flat, it's going to be just like this. Maybe how a football looks. That's all. It's going to be flat. It, it will not have any shadows. It will not have any 3D uh, looking. And this is where most of the uh, interface designers or <coughs> interfaces are moving towards. Okay, this is just the introduction of what it is. Yeah, this is one of the examples for information architecture. I think I showed a, so this is, yeah, I think before getting into this, uh, shall we pick one example and we'll see how to design an end-to-end -end interface. Uh, we cannot do it in one full hour. At least we will try to touch upon the very important points. Uh, I need some examples to design any application. And we will go by the vote. I think there are two or three hands. Yes? No, no, no. Oh, okay. the, mm. I, I think this is not an example, but uh, mm. this is an example of what, what is done. Okay. Paytm. Paytm? Uh, Paytm. P-A-Y-T-M. Okay. The website okay. Uh, was designed for the mobile itself. Okay. And that's the same interface that you, that's used on the uh, desktop as well. Okay. okay. So would that be a... Yes, we, we will see. We will see. Uh, one uh, we go over what? Paytm, right? Paytm. Okay, this is a user interface a design. Sorry, it's a web application. It's an app. It's, it's an app. A it's an app. So any other examples can be. A app. video saving site. Clear. A video saving site. Video saving. 
we will share it. Okay. So we do a shopping cart. Shopping cart. I think one of the most yes. easiest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Can we look at data visualization? Uh, no, that's only one part of the whole thing. What we'll see is how to uh, uh, design an interface. Uh, data visualization will be only one part of the whole thing. Okay. So we can have visualization between one of these. Uh, I think. What about Google search? Search yeah. result page. Search result page. Then we take travel search into Google. Yeah. Again, search result, travel search result. Okay. Yeah. I think another way of putting it is what if we re engineer your Google Analytics? Google Analytics. Analytics. Uh, I think that's a. Okay. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think uh, one of the easiest and we can finish something in one hour is one of the search result. So we pick this example, and uh, it's not only me going to design the whole thing. It's a group. Uh, we will come up with ideas. I'll pick the ideas. We'll put it here, and we'll design the application. Is it fine? Okay. So yes. What are we going to do when we have this first information? We are going to do a search. What we'll have to do is, and most of you might know, user research. Because I, as a designer, or you as a developer, cannot assume things and start building. That's the reason is you will end up doing something which is very, very different from what the user <coughs> might want it. What are we going to do here? We are going to go sit and talk to the user. For this, there are two ways of doing it. One is brainstorming, most of you might know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one of the design thinking principles we will have to go through. Yes, 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 yes. So what is he talking is, what we will do generally is we will go sit with the actual users where all the domain people will be there. Example, if we are building an example application for financials, the designer will surely know nothing about the financial application. So how is he going to learn it? He has to sit with the actual uh, domain knowledge people. One is that. Second, he has to have a lot of developers with him. Because they are the ones who's going to say, no, 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 this feature cannot be done. We don't have the infrastructure. And three, the product owner or who's the person who's going to take the call, yes, we are going to do it. Then all it's going to be the domain people. So he will specifically is when you go sit to the domain people, what they say is, so please come up with something then we'll get you. Do not ask such. Yeah, as a designer uh, who is running the whole uh, workshop, you're not 
you can take a, a feedback, but you're not going to work on it. You cannot say, okay, you come with an example, then I will. So you sit and explain him what are the things that you might want in your application to work. What do you expect in this situation to happen? Example, if I click on uh, close uh, uh, expenditure, what are you expecting to happen? So these kind of questions will trigger him to give answers so that uh, it will be helpful for the designer to continue or design the screens. Did I answer? Right, right. But do we have many? Set of questions which you can ask. You what do you for a design discussion? Mm -hmm. you set yeah. guidelines? You there is a set design. of guidelines that's completely about uh, 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 brainstorming things, and it's called design thinking most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's there. And people are uh, user research cannot actually be done easily. Uh, example, give an example, very good example about uh, Ford. Uh, Henry Ford, I think most of you know this example, right? So Henry Ford wanted to build something different or he wanted to uh, do something on the motors. What he did is he went and go, went and asked the users, what do you, what do you want? He says, my uh, horses, I, they, they, that time they were uh, riding the horses. They said, uh, okay, my horse, uh, horses are uh, running, but uh, they're not running fast. So why do you need, the question was, why do you want them to be fast? Because I have to reach the destination really fast. So if the question was, what do you want? You would have asked, the answer would be as simple as, I need a faster horse. Faster horse. But he asked, again, why do you need to reach the destination faster? Because I have work, I have to finish my work, then I have to come back to my uh, work, I mean, uh, home. Open-ended questions are more preferred. Yeah, yeah. So the questions went on, went on, and asking just why, why, why. The reason for asking so many why is this, the finally he said, because I have to spend time with my family. That's one of the most, the, the problem. From solving the problem of the user to reach home faster, he developed completely different and different. So that's one of the ideas of the developers and also the users, not to build exactly what the user is saying, to solve the problem in a different way. Uh, yeah, that's uh, in the, uh, User research, I have a few points. I just. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Are not getting exposed to the customer requirement. Yeah. Yeah, one of the main, uh, what, what he's saying is, the main use of this user research is, most of the times, the salespeople or the product owner goes and sits at the customer location, he asks, what do you want? He gives a list, A, B, C, D, E. They come back, develop A, B, C, D, E, and gives them back. But is that the exact requirement? We're not sure. So that's why this brainstorming and design workshops are really, really very, very important in terms of a design. And these are uh, handled by experts. If you ask me, I, can I do a user research? I am not good at it. I am at the last stage. So you need user researchers in any of your applications to go sit with the users, conduct a design workshop, do a brainstorming, come up with a final set of deliverables. That is, you'll be giving what are you going to solve. And there is something called as point of view. Now we're coming back to the example. We have a search app. So maybe we are talking to everyone. What do you want in a search app to do? Uh, can we expect some, what is the main intention of a search result app? Uh, search is the keywords. Search is the keywords, okay, that's the uh, Or gives relevant results. Why do you want to uh, search? You give relevant results, I'm sorry. You need relevant results, okay. Categories. What are they going to search here? What is the application going to solve? We have most of the application. What is the kind of domain? Or what is the segment of searches what are we going to do? The example? Places. Uh, places, okay. There's an, uh, we want to solve only the places. So you have a problem. You don't have a uh, search app that gives only places. We assume things. So why do you want to search places? I want to see some tourist spots. Tourist spots. You want to see tourists. But why do you have to search the results? Uh, yeah. I want to see so, okay. which places uh, are uh, preferred by photographers. Okay. So already we are getting some key points here in the search results. 
we'll, uh, we'll know how it is. Okay, then any other examples? Why do you want to search? Uh, well, okay. It's my interest to know things. What things? So, find find Maybe places which, which are... Considering the place, uh, say yeah, I want to this place which I... Okay, some information you're looking into that uh, tourist place? What is the information? Direction. 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 Yeah, so yeah. you need to see the directions. Restaurants. <coughs> okay, then a lot of things are coming up now. <coughs> oh yeah, I forgot that I'm not... Uh, is it okay if I do it? Is it because it's not uh, visible. Yeah, it is. It's not visible. Uh, okay. Because... <laughs> but I'm... You understand what I'm uh, doing here, right? Uh, any confusions here? No, no. Okay, so we have some keywords here. One is somebody wants to see the photographs of the place, somebody wants to see the direction, and somebody wants to see the restaurant. So how we do generally is we don't call, call up 30, 40 people in a room and say give suggestions. It's going to be on a particular topic and most of them are users of the application. Example, if you are searching for something, why do you want to search, what do you want to search? We will have these kind of, uh, what do you say, uh, keywords on which the next level will be worked on. Okay, now we have to solve one problem, user. I put it there because it's important point. On the design workshop, what, what are we doing is? Okay. I'll come to that point. Users, I'll come to the point. I'll just finish this. I think it's there in the slides. The difference between a user interface designer and the interaction designer is quite simple. User uh, researcher, what he would do is he'll go talk to the people. He's not going to design much, but he's going to understand what the user uh, wants and he's going to put it into a big uh, flow saying that, okay, this is the user's requirement. Two is interaction designer. Interaction designer comes in with the help of user researcher. He mostly attends most of the brainstorming sessions. He's going to lay out things for you. Example, search, we will see how we are do doing it. The third one is the visual designer. I think it says what it is. It's about how are you going to make things little good or visually good. Okay, actually I had the slides. We have completed here. Okay, user profiling. So the problem here, what I'm trying to show you is we have users in all varieties, right? But are we going to solve it for everyone? Example, as, as I gave an example, this application should be used by my grandmother. But are we going to solve this problem for our application uh, search? Yes or no? No, because we have a set of users, maybe people are owning devices. These, This is one of the restrictions, okay? In the user, <laughs> In the user, we call this as user profiling because we have to understand who is going to be the user. If the user is going to be seriously a grandmother, then we'll have to design it in a different way. Example, the fonts will be bigger, then it will be more spaced out. More spaced out because reading is a the problem there. Here, oh, whom are we targeting? Let's say today is a crowd, we say techies. So we do not worry about most of the high tech things in this design. And what are we uh, looking at? Age group. So techies say 20s to 60s. Then what is? We are going to look into if it's a new user or a existing user. So in our case, the search application, what we have picked up is a techie who is going to use it. Age is between 20 to 60. And he's a, not a new user, not an existing user. Why are we seeing this is because while designing there are a lot of constraints that we'll have to put in. For example, new or existing user. Uh, is it okay? Is it clear? Uh, okay, having these informations, what, what, what do we have? We need photography points. Or photographs, we need directions and we need restaurants. We will start designing one uh, application here on the thing. So, one, we have to define whether it is a web based or a uh, desktop based. Uh, we would assume search application is mostly web based. 
the reason I'm saying is it has to be a browser thing, and uh, the most important thing is, is your browser compatibility. So we'll have to see, is it going to uh, compare? How, are, how am I going to solve the problem in terms of design is the layout size. Default, most of the users in current uh, using, they are using 1336 into 720. That's the most used resolution. So we're going to build for it. One zero two has become uh, quite old. It's, it was last okay. last year's most used uh, web resolution. Yeah. Uh, 2013, I think the devices have become 16 is to 9 ratio, okay. right? It used to be 4 is to 3 monitors. Yeah. Now it's become like this. So still 720 is there, but uh, 1336 has become the standard uh, resolution size. Okay, I'm gonna just sketch things here. So what do we need? We need to see, I have a tablet pen, uh, pen tablet which is there, get search. Then we have, a, we need to have result set, right? I'm, I'm so bad, I don't know whether you can actually use, use the, this one, no? uh, box tool. The box tool. Yeah. Here is going to be the search uh, box, <coughs> and I'm going to. Uh, we have things like photographs. Right. Right. I'm sorry. I think this is a bad way of presenting. I know the reason why is I thought I'll draw it there but switch to nine ratio. Then we have a search box. And what are the results set? We get we getting area of a search result would be showing for, for uh, tourist places and showing restaurants. For this bo both what we have? Direction. So if you have to put the information architecture, how would I put it as? information I would be giving to the interaction designer saying, okay, the user group is techies, that will be part of the user researcher. Then uh, this is the uh, information architecture. Using this, you can go ahead and create a interaction. Okay. This is ready with us from the uh, user interface uh, point of view. What are we going to see next is uh, Wireframing. Uh, we did speak a little bit about wireframing. Uh, remember what, what did we do for the uh, first uh, login screen? That's called wireframing. We will do an example for the wireframing here. This will be done by the uh, interaction designer. So I would say 
keep it clean. I don't have, uh, we, don't, we didn't talk about anything about advertisements, so we don't have anything. We have very, very clean layout. Search places, right? Then we have, okay, or something else. We don't have cancer here. Or need a search button. Search. This is screen number one. What we are going to do, we are going to tell the user or the next designer saying if in case if he searches, what is going to happen? We we'll have a set of results. So the result number one will have a the most important thing we said is photograph, then information, then also a directional. So this is This, these two screens and the next set of screen can be clicking on this. Okay, I click on this screen, what will happen? Maybe we have one more screen that shows a full page view of the photograph, info, and direction. Okay. So these three are the designs given by the interaction designer for the visual designer. Who detains the buyer page? Uh, interaction designer. Okay, so we'll see. Yes. So in a start in a startup environment, who designs the website? A designer. If in case you were hiring, I think uh, minimum we need two designers. Uh, one for the uh, research completely, to not pull him in any of the other extra work because that's most important. Interaction and visual can be done by a single guy. That is okay to do. Okay, when uh, when doing the work, that's for example, yeah. application sites like banking. Yeah. And other other things does matter since it is a one type job. Yeah. Whereas in the content portals like types of media, all mm -hmm. the things, like, things keeps on changing. Yeah. And many people like from normal college students mm -hmm. to older age people also does it comes. Yeah. So uh, that comes in part of your user profiling, right? But if you know, okay, if it is a college user or a young user you will have to concentrate on a particular way of design. Yeah. For example, let's take about the Times of India. Times of India. Yeah, college students also comes, or yeah. older age people also comes. Yeah. And how? How will you? How yeah, so the, the design group, I mean the user group is completely vast. Most of the times in terms of a uh, newspaper, what they would see is, how are you going to, I'll show an example, I'll show an example I have for that. So this is the information given to a person, okay? This is not on topic user profiling. Say example, you are invited to Vishal's first birthday party. Please come dressed as your favorite cartoon character. Children are welcome. Dinner will be served. If, uh, if you'd like to bring your food, call this person and give the information. When? On 14th of November. This is most of the typical information you read it out as a mail. But if I want to improve this in terms of a Visual hierarchy. How can we do this? We'll try that on the on the board. So I'll tell you the why we are saying saying this. I'll tell you once I do this. So the same example. This will be very helpful for a search result. We we'll take an example of search result and uh, put it into this. So if given to me, I would do it like this. That whose birthday party for what? You understand why I have done this? Simple reason: the the user, whenever he lands upon this information, the first thing he has to see is Vishal's birthday. That's the key point here. Then we have please come. Dressed as your favorite cartoon character. Again, I'm highlighting this because this is one of the second key information which is required on the screen. 
uh, you would generally do this whenever you're writing a mail to someone. What would you do? The most important information you would make it bold and say. So that's also one way of visual hierarchy. So level two is done. Then where? In where? We have information. When? We have information. Then I have something called as RSVP, right? Okay, I have done two things here. I have played with one is called typography, the other one is called proximity or white spacing. Here, both are not there. You see, it's just a plain text. If you ask a person to read, example in your newspaper, uh, example you're saying, if it is very, very plain like this, nobody will have the interest to uh, read into this information. How would the uh, newspaper is doing? They'll have a heading, then they have smaller sections, and they will have colored or bolded things in between so that you uh, see the information highlighted. Taking this example into our search application, how are we going to the information visual hierarchy is? We have a result set. We have a photograph. I would say name of the place. Example, if I search for SAP Labs. Then I would say Bangalore. Then we have one section called as information, right? Okay, it is an IT company situated quite here. Okay, this is done. The most important thing we said we need to know directions. How can you put directions? Two ways. One, go there as in text, but a better way to do is, I think everyone knows this. Why is this important? This is a common thing to like them and Exactly. People just know that what this is. Yeah. Already you're giving a lot of information as a text. And if you want to be highlighted in this part, you can use icons, which is very, very commonly known. I cannot put a direction now saying, assuming this is my direction. Maybe this is the word. So you might confuse the users saying, OK, there's something very different. So always use the consistent uh, iconography, which is understood by everyone. So click on it, what happens? Maybe your, if it's on mobile, we'll have to say, OK, it opens a, a navigation system. If it is on web, it has to open a map. So I would say, click on this on mobile, to navigation system, it is on web, open up. Everything has to be documented in your design. If you're saying this, the reason why we are doing this documentation is if it goes to the developer. You cannot assume if it is on mobile, anybody is going to open the uh, application for uh, the navigation system. If it is on web, he, it is going to be a map. We will have to put everything on the design specification and give it to the developers. Is that okay? Yeah, so this is one of the ways why we uh, say uh, visually how do you hierarchy things. And this will also solve a problem over a scene, even of a, say, college uh, student or a grandmother. But it's not exact answer. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, we'll talk later on, maybe after this class. I'm not getting the right example to tell you the okay, workflow is done. So yes, now is the user validation. Again, which is the, uh, we have not still not designed it in terms of colors, right? We have just laid out as a simple screen saying this is how the hierarchy of the information is going to flow. And on a search, you're gonna get one result on clicking on one particular line item or any, uh, we, we're gonna see a detailed information. This is the workflow. So now comes, is this application right in terms of the user? So you guys give the example. Uh, how I'm going to search photographs. Okay, in this one more part, this more photographs, right? So maybe I put like this, or view more. Which would say, click, clicking on it, I can see more photographs, or I can keep scrolling through. This is also one of the user requirements which we have forgotten, which has to be on the screen. Okay, now I'm going to do a user validation. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to sit with the user,
saying this is what we have to do. There are two two ways. One is paper prototype, or one is a real prototype. What I will do with the paper prototype is you will put everything in a paper, ask the user to see it and say, okay, is this your right or wrong? Most of the times, the, it's better to do a prototype and go to the user. We mostly do it, right? Most of the things before you go to the actual production or development, we do a uh, prototype and go. The reason is, any changes here can be made before the actual development. We do a small uh, uh, user uh, validation here. So you were the people who said, I need to follow the other person, not there. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're sitting there for this <laughs> Yeah. Uh, first screen is, I go search the user set. What, what are you expecting to see in the result set? The uh, question is, I search. Let's search for SAP labs. I put in SAP labs. What are you going to see in the terms of the set? I'm asking a question, so what will be the answer? So, uh, I'm finding the way I started the talk, uh, but this application is. So I was talking from a photographic perspective, but if you are talking about astronomy, let's change it. No, 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 that's again a problem. We have to address how it is. So the user said the whole application, I'm considering only the business user, we consider him as a different user later. The problem I'm seeing here is the user said something else, but I have designed something else. That's a mistake. So when, when are we getting it to know? At the time of? Prototyping, not after the complete app development and going to the user and saying, already I got to know, I have only, only yeah. you are the user, yeah. different user. That's right. Yeah. So, what did you expect? So, I expected uh, which places are, I mean, they may not be famous, but which places are frequented by photographers so that I can go there and photograph those things. Frequently viewed photographs. That's one of the requirement which I forgot to collect it in the previous research, but I am doing it right now. So frequently viewed? No, not frequently viewed photographs. Which places are famous between photographs, among photographers? Mm -hmm. Which they generally go for uh, photography sessions? Sir, recently photographed. In other words, say, uh, being on a search engine, you can track a location. So places close to me, which is known to photography. Yes. Okay. So this is more so in terms of your current location. location. You have something, places near to you, which is good for photography. They may not be famous tourist spots, but they are Okay. Photographers like to go there to play. Okay. So the learning from here is we have figured out even before development that okay, the user uh, is completely different. What we come back and do, we have to conduct one more brainstorming session with you saying what is the exact requirement, is it okay, then do a prototyping, this will delay the project, but better not to give a very bad project, a bad application, you might not use it, but do it in before and we will see. But yeah, this is very different, we pick up user validation of that person who said, uh, we have this. Uh, so there are a lot of people who said uh, we need uh, directions, right? So I click on search. This time I will take five moments. Uh, then what are the expected results that you are expecting to see on the screen? How do I get to that place? So after clicking on search, I am going to display you all the results with info. And a map, info, and a location. So, where do you think you will be able to navigate to your location on the screen? Uh, which is the action that is going to lead to a navigation on this screen? Because okay, that's actually obvious. So, one of the uh, requirements he has to navigate that is met here. So, there is one more item called. More, what do you expect to see here in more? Yeah. So this is one example of a user research what we do. The reason for doing this is, have I met the user's requirement? So does this application meet the requirement of you in terms of a search, your information and your uh, navigation? So this means, so what we do next is the visual design. So sometimes what happens that even you just say that it's met my requirement, uh -huh. but it's actually not meeting, uh, you know, meeting his requirement. Uh -huh. So in this, in, in, in this example, how is it? In this example, say he wanted direction when he clicked there, right? Yeah. So now he's searching for see 
to some particular things. Yeah. His satellites. Mm -hmm. So satellite can be ten satellites in Bangalore. Just take example. Yeah. So his mind, his mindset is in white thing. So actually, you know, he cannot go each regions and say click on the uh, get direction and see and then come back. Yeah. So he, he, he in his mind, that. it's actually that uh, he want to figure out a particular satellite. So maybe based on the uh, okay. Control this is the requirement that is coming very very late. So and uh, these are things what we'll have to include if in case it was requirement, you know, yeah. to complete it. We'll take one of the countries for it. Yeah, yeah. For example. Yeah. So yeah. what you said is, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what we we'll see is we have three examples. Maybe the three samples. Uh, whichever you want to click, you click on it, see the information. That is, anyways, you have an information about where it is located, it is a white thing. Then again, we have one more item here, see navigation. So, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Is it okay? So, so this would that mean requirements come at a later point? So, the information that you display have a place for, for location also there. Mm -hmm. So, you have one strip which says SAP white field, SAP uh, Indranagar, whatever. Right? Just have to add an extra tag or something to the information bar that you have to show it. Most, isn't most of the validation done uh, by taking the taking the thing to the user? So is it is it more not more the testing? Uh, yeah, it's called user testing. It is very required. It you are user testing has to be with the users who are going to use the application. Maybe you would have done a brainstorming with the finance guy who knows information. But if the user is going to be a person who's on the system uh, on the workshop, you will have to test it with him. In, in the example, a finance guy or a, say, a, a manufacturing unit says, I need to build a car. And this is the application to track all the equipments. A domain knowledge guy will be sitting with you. But while you're testing, you cannot test with him because he's not going to be the final user of putting the materials. You have to sit with the tester, do a, a user validation. Uh, that's called mostly usability testing, not user validation. User validation will be most of your uh, stakeholder finance head, or sorry, no, uh, manufacturing head. Those kind of user validation. So, so does the uh, would I be right if I say user validation is validating whether you are targeting the right user as uh, as the owner of the product? No, no. no. You, what you're going to say is have the, de the application which I've de uh, designed is it uh, meeting the requirements of the user in a right way or not? But that is only uh, that can only be defined by a user, isn't it? It cannot be defined by by the owner of the uh, yeah product, yeah it? yeah. So the person who's going to put in the materials, he, we have to sit with him. We'll take this again. Okay, uh, I'll show you in one example where we have uh, completely transformed our interaction design into a visual design. Uh, this will sh clearly show you how we have done it. So this is an example where you're going to track three things: my location, current location, wherever I'm going. This is one of the projects we have done. So I'm giving an example which is going to be clear. Uh, this was the interaction designer who gave me saying that. I have a uh, requirement. A person, uh, depending on his heart rate, the mobile is going to uh, track his heart rate, and it's going to give him a, uh, a final screen saying that where has uh, where has been he moving around the day, what was his average heart rate, and whom are the uh, people he is meeting a day. Example: six o'clock, his heart rate was 120. He was jogging on the street with a uh, one of his <laughs> with one of his colleague. That's one information. Ten o'clock, he went to shopping with his wife. His heart rate was sixty-eight. So that kind of information we'll have to show it. This was the screen which was given. It's quite complicated if you think right. What point of a time? It's going to be just like a Excel sheet. Time, date, who, what was the heart rate? But what I did in terms of a visual design. Is this? You get to see. Oh, uh, uh, this is a little confusing, but over time you will you will understand what the application is giving. You have the blue color as where. You have the orange color as the width, and you have the almost pink color of saying what is the activity. So if you this is the average BPM for your particular day. OK, there's one more information you've seen, I think. What is your heart rate at that point of time? OK? So 
example take this part of the uh, uh, screen here i was with a person sorry this is activity right i was doing an activity yeah here here this is 131 right so i take my mouse over and i click on this it says i was at this location that is the orient mall and i was with a person even before that right there was with uh, sushma ravid and vara some three people and what was i doing i was just walking is this clear yeah so how did we this is not 100% solved i would not say this is 100% solving the application or this was the interaction design that was given and how do we solve it very very simple and a visual way is this example okay and have one more example to show how did we do this in terms of a this is another application this sh shows visual hierarchy i just one minute then we'll go for it uh, so uh, can somebody help me in reading uh, one of the information just read it loud currently to correct ppm yeah 60 to 100 healthy uh, ppm okay previous averages 72 yesterday 82 last week 73 last month okay you are saying this is a healthy ppm and the font weight is little less and also the color is little dulled out or desaturated next comes the other information you can try doing this if i put this 72 into 600 make it really big and this is less we'll start reading from there yeah it is not right to left or left to right it is about how you are going to yes. visually uh, hierarchy board, board. yeah it is with three things i'll show you one example that would be the last example because of my time okay i i i missed the thing I'll show you here. You see this? There's a big problem here. Right? The only only reason is space. So yeah, so you are even this even even on the screens there can be a lot of confusions you might put into the user's uh, head. So what you have to do is consider three things. One is typography. Second is proximity. The third is spacing. What is typography? We saw an example. Sanity was bold, then other things were light and dulled out. That is typography. Proximity is this problem. You have placed two different things very close and that's giving a different meaning. And again, one more, uh, the same example of for, for proximity is this. What I've done is I've put these two together so that it is reading as 72 in the current BPM. Take this as an example. These two are closer than these two. Actually, it is double the space. The reason is when you're reading this, 72 is the yesterday's thing. 82 is last week's. 73 is the more the clothes you put, it belongs to that group. Now, the the, day, the uh, olden days, what you have to you do is you put boxes and say, I would, okay, this box is this information, this box is this information. But nowadays, what we're using is white spacing and proximity. If two objects are close by, then it means it is of the same group. Again, you, you can see it here. These three are together, which shows the current thing or what it can be. And there's a big white space, and these three is the previous information. There is no line, there is no box, there is no different color. With the same font, with the same uh, color, font color, you can show how informations are different using proximity and uh, white spacing. I think I will close the session now. And uh, one more thing which I forgot to tell is, how do you actually come up with the color? Why is this orange color? And why it is not red color? There are a lot of things that again goes in visual design. You will just not say, okay, I, I love yellow, let me pick. I love orange. The reason it was picked is the whole application was based on a healthy or a, or a fitness based thing. So when we studied the colors, there's a saying also saying peach is related to healthiness. Peach, orange and green, these were the colors that was derived out and we'll have to put that here. So that is a part of visual designer where he would come up with colors, this proximity, this typography and white spacing. Yes, so questions? Yes. Yeah. We have something called as what font it is. 
see I have a pig here which is uh, Roboto. The, re the reason is one, Android. Number two, it is uh, not very uh, corporate and it is also not very kiddish. Example, if I'm uh, designing an application for a kids, I would not use this application, uh, this font. Maybe I would pick a font which is Adam's hand, which is very uh, casual and writing because that's for the kids. So we would see that, and also we would see the readability. Uh, sans and sans serif, uh, you would know the difference. So if you're reading a uh, lot of information in a page, we would, uh, example is newspaper, would use serif. Because uh, the, no, okay, I'll tell you one more thing. Initially it used to be only print is san, uh, serif, web is always sans serif. I think uh, most of you know what is sans and sans serif difference. Okay, uh, if not, there's a small difference which will have, uh, so if it has all these things. No, the one with thorns and the one without thorns. Yeah, one with thorns and if it is this, it is sans serif and without, the reason why we, uh, okay, I was telling something. I was telling uh, we were using sans serif, sans serif only in the web. Nowadays people are using even serif. The reason is the size of the device are becoming bigger. So we have a lot of space. You can also put uh, serif on. Serif is used only in terms of print media. Newspaper, all the newspapers will have serif fonts. All the web-based application will have sans serif. So we will decide on why do we have to go to the font itself. And again, even inside the font, there are different kinds of fonts. One is a casual font, one is a corporate font, one is a, a very a bold and uh, you have a, what is it, designer fonts also. So you'll have to pick on what kind of an application, why do we have to set the font? Yeah, in typography fonts also, yes. Um, another thing I did to add on uh, typography yeah. fonts medium space, another common thing that you can do is Instead of having space, just have different uh, colors of fonts. If you look at the bar chart logo, yeah, they're not really played around with proximity or space except between the letters itself. Yeah, but they are together, but they use different colors to differentiate. Actually, yeah, yeah, one is that, and also they have used a different uh, weight of the font. Space. This is uh, higher weight, and this is a lower weight. Yes, you can play with even colors. Yeah, basic when you start with the typography with these things, that will come on top of it. Mostly, visual design will handle that. That's also one good point. You can separate two different words by uh, colors, which I will speak it here. Yeah. Any, any, any other questions on uh, what we saw? Yeah, this is actually a huge topic. I tried to compress in a one hour slot that was not actually didn't work uh, right. <laughs> I couldn't finish any of the uh, visual design part. Okay. Visual design is uh, why do you uh, pick a color and how do you apply the primary color, the secondary color? That also is important. Example, there you see three colors, right? And how is it applied everywhere? See, there, there are no other extra colors than here. <coughs> so why do you uh, two, pick only two colors or three colors? And how do you also put it? Here the most prominent color is yellow. So that's going to be the bar cramp uh, primary color. And secondary color is orange, so that's this. We have to see that one is that is missed. Sometimes the number of colors that we use plays a role in case of print media. So you want to keep your cost low and things like that. So yes, stick to primarily two or three colors. Yes, but and usually also it is also it is pleasing to have not more than three colors. <laughs> if you start putting ten colors there, this will look really bad. That's the problem. Just another day, it looks to be like uh, whatever pleases the users, we try to keep it. Yeah. But still, I can compromise, for example, the font size, the characters, forms. I can compromise. Yeah, I can see everything. Yeah. Is it that the uh, art cost in the rules are there? Yeah, it is a designer's cost, not the uh, final user's cost. Uh, user would not, I mean, they will be saying, no, 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 I don't need this color. But it's a designer who would say, okay, this is good, this is not good. Uh, yes, uh, it's a thumb rule is one. Uh, again, to copy the rule, that's a carpet. Yeah, so okay. people who are done can so we just take the question and answer. Yes, take the Yeah, so lunch is there, I agree. Uh, Whoever wants to talk, and. What I'm saying is, design has to be inclusive, not exclusive. Yeah. 
So that we are one key learning for today is please talk to the users and design. Without that, I mean, we don't believe in designing just by the developers or just by the user research and user validation are very very important. That was the target, but it went here and there. I will have to make a choice.